worked in this case, um, a producer who, who knew me called Gabriel Turner um, had teamed up with a producer called PJ von Sandweig, who I'd never met. And PJ had got the rights to the divers, the British divers story on this. And uh, Gabby said to PJ, why don't we go to Bill, that's me, um, to, to do this. So they came to me. And to be honest, you know, I knew nothing about it. I, I wasn't pursuing this or anything like that. But of course, I immediately looked into it. And what I discovered was this was just made in heaven for a, for a movie. I mean, I, I don't want to diminish the reality of the suffering, but the, the sheer storytelling of the actual events, you could not make it up. So I very gratefully accepted the gig. This is a real story. These are real people, real lives. Somebody actually died, real death. You can't mess with that. You, you, you have an absolute duty to know what the, the real events were, what happened and why, and to reflect that in telling the story um, as best as you can. So yes, there was an immense amount of research. It, it wasn't, um, wasn't all done by me. Um, the, the, the production team hired a very brilliant researcher and he just covered absolutely everything. I mean, I had stacks of material, interviews with people, timelines, scientific information to work with. I mean, like too much, you know, it, it was overwhelming, but it's important. Um, and my job as a, as a storyteller, as a screenwriter, is to find my way through all of the real stuff and create two hours of story. I mean, Ron is extraordinary because he has, he's got two quite distinct qualities. One is he's very good on process. He's very interested in it. He's very clever at it. He likes to work out exactly, you know, what the machines had to do, what the science had to do, or whatever. Um, and so he worked through that with me so that he could understand it and so that he could make sure it was clearer in the film. But the second thing is he's very good, and this is why I love him, he's very good on emotions and characters. So, you know, we, we would talk about, is this the right point at which to tell the part of the story that's very tragic, which is the, the, the death of the Thai diver, for example. And working with him, we would try different arrangements of the events to tell the story as clearly as possible and to show how it motivated people. So this is the story of a group of, of Thai kids. They're in their, um, their age, like from 13 to, to 16. And uh, they are soccer players and they go off after a soccer match just for a bit of fun into a cave in the mountains, which is easier to go into. People go in a lot, it's not dangerous, but it's deep. And what they don't know is it's been raining way north in the mountains, not where they are. And that water has been trickling down through the mountains for a long time. And suddenly when they're deep in the cave, which is kind of scary, but okay, it hits and they are trapped. They're in a bit of the cave where they can not be underwater, but to get out, it's full of water, they can't get out. So they're stuck. So from then on, the story we have is, will they ever get out? How will they get out? And uh, that you know, very simple Jeopardy tale, but with an awful lot of complexity along the way. He's actually a very philosophical guy, a very thoughtful guy. Um, and I found him extremely interesting and also very honest. And he's not interested in publicity. He doesn't want to be famous, doesn't want to make money. These people are volunteers. They don't charge money. It's just extraordinary. And I absolutely loved that. So when, I mean, when I heard Viggo Mortensen was going to play him, I thought, yes, yes, this guy, you know, Viggo is a, he's far out himself as a human being. <laughs> um, he'll get this, he will deliver this, which of course he, he did in, in spades. John has a kid. He has a, an ex-wife um, and he has a son. And that makes it very different for him. Um, uh, Rick doesn't, but John, you know all the time there's some connection happening in him between these boys stuck in the cave and his own son. And you don't have to say it, it's obviously there. Um, and he's a slightly softer guy than Rick. He's younger, 10 years younger. Rick is always the leader. Rick's the hard man and the leader, but kind of Rick needs John. And I loved the relationship between them. I think having them on set was a terrific bonus. I wasn't there myself, but I, I, I just know that for the actors and for Ron, to have the real people saying, actually, you put it on this way, 
you do this at this point you'd feel like um is is uh, it's gold it's pure gold and, and you don't always have that opportunity so incredibly important and great for the divers themselves because i think they've seen a lot of films made of this stuff that are very unrealistic and they were very keen that it should be realistic so this whole um event caught the imagination of the world it was a big news story it was on the news every day and that attracted people who thought they might be able to help and mostly within thailand an enormous response happened within thailand both from the government i mean the government just threw everything at it they said whatever it takes we will pay um but also from individuals um who thought they might have a skill whether it was um rock climbing um uh diving of course but also cooking food um washing clothes whatever people just came there were like 10,000 people in the camp around the cave at its height and these were all volunteers nobody asking for any money they just said if i can help i'll help and i i, I think in within thailand there was this feeling that these boys were our boys it was like the whole nation's children were stuck you know what rick and john will say this is not america um it's a technical accomplishment they worked out how to do it and they did it and that's not a miracle but i think there is a miraculous well perhaps that's the wrong word there's an extraordinary and unusual side to it which is that all the people concerned managed to keep hoping they managed to keep trying at a point when honestly they had every reason to give up that didn't happen here and that's extraordinary i think it was like a massive national act of will by tyler um and without that it, they would have died so i think you can say that's it's a sort of miracle that so many people chose to believe and to go on believing and to do what was necessary i think that quality of the triumph of what's best in human beings coming through this story I I hope people come out of this film and just feel better about being human, feel better about their fellow humans, feel more generous, feel more hopeful, feel more excited.